Great. Welcome to the SMI community meeting for community. That's a hard word to say. The SMI community meeting for September 16th, 2020. Uh, today we have a few items to discuss. Uh, and then we have a few people who, you know, haven't been in the meeting for a while, maybe have things they want to say. So we'll make sure the floor is open after the few items that we want to discuss. Uh, the first one on the list is Michelle was saying we needed at least one more reviewer on the TCP UDP routes additions to traffic specs. Michelle, do you want to do you want to take that? Tell us what's going on with that. What are you looking for people to tell you about their thoughts on it? Oh, I uh, yeah, it's uh, Stefan's. Um, I think that was Stefan's PR, uh, but. Um, it, it just needs one more review, one more LGTM from a maintainer. Uh, I didn't see any issues with it. It looks straightforward to me. I think the only thing that we might want to consider is calling out in traffic split that um, since traffic split supports traffic specs, that this would mean that um, uh, implementations would support traffic split uh, via traffic Oh God, all these uh, <laughs> prefixes. <laughs> the word traffic is support. losing all meaning at this point. Yeah, <laughs> that we would um, uh, support um, TCP route. Okay, okay, good. All right, so we'll hopefully get somebody else looking at that real quick. You know, we can get that in, which sounds for, awesome. For Hello, can I, uh, can I say yes. something? The, Please uh, do. Hi. Uh, sorry for not being able to attend the last meeting I was on vacation. Vacation's great. So there is a comment on the issue around the not being able to, one second, I'll find it. So there is a, yeah, there is a comment on, um, so on the pull request could be um, ambiguous between TCP and HTTP routes. So there are some situations where um, the current proposal doesn't, it doesn't take into account. Um, so let's, let's put that on standby and discuss the issue, okay? Okay, so we think more discussion is needed on the issue specifically. Yes, thank you, Bridget. Awesome, all right. What, um, yes. what issue comment are you referring to? Would you mind dropping a, a link? Yep. Great, thank you. Thanks. Okay, um, anything more on this topic before we look at the next topic? Okay, um, so Patrice had mentioned on Slack that he was confused about where to find information about CRDs uh, because CRD info is under a language specific location, that being the Go SDK. And so I wanted to open it up to the maintainers and have them discuss should we have a pointer in like the main spec readme saying the CRD info is over here? Is there a better way to handle that? What do people think? Yeah, link uh, seems pretty simple to me. Yeah. It sounds about right so that people don't have to browse the repos to, you know, a repo overview is kind of a nice thing. Yeah, I think the, the confusion was because if you don't want to write in Go, then you're like, why would I look in the Go SDK for something about how Kubernetes CRDs work? And so I, it's kind of a scoping issue of like where we have it conceptually, but I also don't think it actually necessarily belongs directly in the spec repo as suggested. That's why I was like, hmm, I don't know. Yeah, it's like the CRDs get um, updated when we update um, like the Go SDK. So first, like the spec gets updated. So we couldn't like put in the spec document a link to the CRDs because they wouldn't be updated, you know? So like um, we just, I think in the readme in where it says SMI documents or something, we could maybe like link to 
um, the SDK repo CRDs. That's not like the best way of- I mean, that's a, that's a great place to start. I feel like, yeah, okay, if we wanna do giant repo reorganizations, sure, but like let's de-confuse people to start with. So I like that. I guess we, we don't even like reference the SDK on the README, so that might be a good good place to start. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, I can help or- Oh, I can, I mean, I can, I can add a link, that's fine. I just didn't want to add links in a way that would confuse people, but now that I have general lazy consensus that we want to do that, then yeah, let's do it. Great. I'll do it. So under SMI documents, we can put mm -hmm. a section for SDKs. Awesome, thank you. Awesome. Okay, cool. Uh, that is a nice action item for me. Um, and we had Lee uh, have some ideas he wanted to talk about with the ongoing work on conformance. Yeah, and, and actually just to confuse, I should have spoke up a little bit earlier on the oh. PR that we were talking about. This is, oh. this comment is probably not useful, but I guess I can, is. Um, okay, so this is going back to, for note purposes, we're going back up to the traffic spec discussion. Yeah. Okay. Um, is like we were so. So from my perspective, net positive that um, HTTP, TCP, UDP, and that the support for those um, explicitly is is there. Um, like as a as an aside, like a HTTP sort of runs on top of TCP, and so like. Uh, technically, like one is a subset of the next, although probably and this is why i was saying it's probably not a helpful comment is like it probably doesn't really matter that much it's probably easier conceptually to to grok and just sort of see that they're all equal and so sure well, I, I mean i'm not i'm not positive i understand what the best thing for us to do is are you saying that we want to make sure to special case http as like a special case of tcp or that was like, is there the action thought. for us to take in terms of making uh, sure we clarify that? Yeah, or just to throw out that thought that, um, yeah, one is uh, HTTP is a subset of TCP, and, and d as a point of 30 second reflection, does, would it be looking forward, would that be helpful to us as we potentially identify support for other TCP based, <clears throat> other TCP based protocols, like in terms of not repeating ourselves? Do we have certain sorry, certain base level um, parameters or metadata around TCP and then as a gRPC and NATS and HTTP as like subsets of, um, you know, of TCP or just, hey, that's fine. We'll just, there's not much repeating going on. We'll just have them all as first class citizens, so to speak, top level. Help me understand that partially for, for ascribing reasons, but also for, for like logical reasons. Your argument I, I, I think I understand your argument in the sense of that if the one is the subset of the other, then we can kind of like reuse things. But what I don't really get is that would only be valid in a regime where you have kind of like the semantics would, would inherit stuff. Like, do we actually have that? Yeah, I don't know that we do. I, it just sort of occurred to me that like, oh, if this hasn't been a consideration, maybe it's worth mentioning and, and I, don't, I don't really have a strong this isn't necessarily a strong argument or this is clearly not a strong argument and isn't necessarily a suggestion that we go and define inherent um, inheritance and um, the, the, but, the question is it's a meta question the question is does the way how we specify it allow us to benefit from inheritance and I think oh, the answer is no 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 one, one second um, what TCP to HTTP means in our context here mm -hmm. is the fact that you uh, specify the port, the list of ports, and mm -hmm. those ports apply to the HTTP um, filter. So right. we can just add a list of ports to also okay. to the HTTP definition and then there is no relationship to TCP anymore. Uh, I, 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 I understand that. The question is still for me, like how do we how do we express these constraints? How do we express that using CRDs, what? right? Yeah. Well, right. So if you look at, at the, the, the way the Kubernetes model is, 
does it allow inheritance? Does it allow it to express that? Because then it would make sense to say like TCP and then you have HTTP and other TCP based protocols that inherit stuff from the base class TCP. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure this somehow would work for protocol buffers, but I'm not sure how to express that in a in a resource, in the in the Kubernetes resource model. You see what I mean, Chef? It's, it's not about the, the concrete case. It's just, how do you express that? In YAML, you, you could, it can be expressed, but um, Michael, you know better than I actually, um, for sure, uh, like whether or not that's an easy expression to realize or manifest inside of a custom resource. Yeah, I, I, I don't. I, don't I, I could be wrong, but I don't think so. Like anyone correct me here, I, I, I don't think so. That, that, that's what I'm trying to do. You know, like how would you actually write that, right? How would you express Okay, so it sounds like that's something we're not gonna solve on this call, but thank you for mm, bringing it perfect. to our attention. And we, we have some notes. And then if we can put more of your thoughts on as another comment on that issue, that would probably be really useful. Uh, I'll be definitely commenting on 185 as well. Yeah, let's, yeah. let's continue it there. Good call. Sorry for such a... Um, okay, yeah, because, uh, yeah. Sure. yeah. No, Is there anything you, else we Michelle. need to talk about about that, Lee, before we nope. go back to your actual issue? Nope, yeah, thank you for doing that. <laughs> so, <laughs> All right, uh, let's get back to your actual customized conformance topic. Uh, yeah, which is to say that there's a there's a, a design spec um, out there for SMI conformance, and we, we talked about it a, a couple of, we've kind of gone over it a couple of times. Um, it only had, um, near as I can tell from some of the input from uh, some on this call and some not on this call, that the the skeleton of it, the bones of it are are decent or no, no one has said otherwise. And, and uh, as we've um, demonstrated and sort of implemented it, it's only, there's some flesh or there's some meat that's left. Um, boy, if I got to choose a different analogy, but that is um, yet to be defined and it's um, the, the specific tests. So that there's... Um, uh, a few examples of tests to be, you know, conformance tests to be run and, and what those tests assert must be true in order to, you know, p pass or fail. Uh, but, and so th this is a call for consideration, a call for others to come to express opinion or come to bear or, or you know, help define what those tests, you know, are, what would be. There's examples in there, so without like it's just to save time and things. I, I think that they're they're relatively straight straightforward. The the assertions that are being made. So. Is there um, plan to like implement one um, like a uh, test for like one API over the other? Um, like, are you going to start with traffic target just so I can prioritize? Yeah, uh, um, the framework accounts for testing against each of the specs. The examples that have been done thus far, if I recollect, it's, I think there, there might be like eight-ish or so total, um, a couple, a few for traffic access and a few for traffic metrics. Uh, and then and then no particular priority, um, you know, beyond that. Okay. I think traffic access is the easiest one for me to digest so I can start there. Nice. Nice. Um, thanks. Yeah, that was, that was mostly it is just sort of more, I think it's time, it's race ready, it needs to be beat up and holes poked in it. And... Verified and validated. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, I want to make sure that anybody who didn't add something to the agenda but wants to talk about something gets a chance. And while people are thinking about that, um, our next meeting is September 30th. And I would love to have somebody volunteer, uh, possibly who will be able to be here on September 30th. I mean, I plan to be here, but somebody volunteer to do what I just did and somebody volunteer to do what Michael just did. Um, so yeah, uh, drop something in the chat or speak up or add your name to the doc, whatever makes you the most comfortable. Um, and by that, you don't mean that, that by Michael, what Michael did to derail the, the conversation and oh, the things. that's a good point. You mean scribing? Just the right? note, just the note taking, <laughs> um, just the scribing. But if you want to also add insights, as Michael did, that is fantastic. But I don't require the, that in terms of setting up for note taking. <laughs> I, I do have one question. Um, 
we don't necessarily have to discuss it now, but I'd like to raise it. It's mm -hmm. again, essentially, do we have anything planned around uh, the upcoming KubeCon? So KubeCon North America being beginning mid-November. Uh, do we have anything as a, you know, CNCF project that might be um, an opportunity to do something? I want to say sandbox projects aren't automatically given sessions. So unless somebody submitted something, I don't think we have a session. Um, project office hours last time were a thing and I think we didn't do any. So that's a, that's a good note that mm -hmm. if we want to um, think about running some project office hours, uh, time concurrent with um, the upcoming KubeCon North America, uh, those would probably be early to midday for US and um, later in the day for uh, EU. So, yeah, perhaps. I would uh, definitely sign up. Yeah, I think. Why don't we make a note? Um, and I'm, I'm saying, you know, make a note. But like, I could make a note as well. But um, yeah, if Michael, if you want to make a note, that what we should do is pick some times during KubeCon North America that uh, would be a great, you know, run an opus open drop-in office hour of the project office hours um, that the CNCF, like they publish, at least for the last one. So I assume for this one too, they publish a list and people who want to go to a project's office hours can like show up and there's usually a couple of maintainers who are taking questions from all comers. And that went pretty well. I, I was in a couple of those for the Helm project and, uh, you know, like 30 or so attendees would show up and really want to talk, you know, not nitpick about one specific PR or something. It's not like that. It's more, I really want to understand more about where this is going or where that's going. So nice. Um, okay. And we have uh, volunteers for next time. Um, at least we have a volunteer from Lee for notes. Thank you. And, uh, and bad jokes too, if that's, um, yeah. That's oh, those are always a good choice okay, because good. strangely uh, enough, whenever I mention, all well, right. Whenever I mention on Slack that this meeting is happening, people jump in and look at the notes and they don't all come to the meeting, but I think people get interested to get a chance to see what's discussed. So, all right. Uh, is there anyone else, uh, especially people who come from time to time or haven't spoken up yet this meeting, is there anyone else who has something they want us to know about, to talk about? Tell us their thoughts. Um, I do. Um... Yeah. There's, uh, I need to go, I need to circle back with a conversation that I'd had with, uh, privately with Nginx, um, mm. of, of a couple of them as, did, did anyone catch the, I barely caught the announcement, uh, but I've been waiting on it for a couple of months. Um, Nginx has a new service mesh. I hope I'm not breaking new, like I saw somebody publish on DevOps.com. Uh, they've been oh, having well, a service mesh. It can't be secret website. if they put it on a website, right? Yeah, it's a good, yeah. <laughs> Um, and uh, the API is entirely SMI, like or like SMI is the API, or you know, like, uh, and so uh, cool, yes. really, you know, really, really awesome. Also, astounding that they were, I, I think, just sort of in general that they were able to uh, do so without asking a question, <laughs> or like, you know. It's a, either a tribute to the, the docs or, or it's a tribute to them to like, you know, anyway. Um, anyway, it's an exciting thing for the, the project. I think it's super cool, actually. Awesome. And um, uh, the SMI conformance, um, I think, helps reinforce that like, hey, or, or, or are they or, or, or not? And, and, Any chance that we can get them uh, to write a blog post? Like, you know, essentially saying like, look, you folks, you did such a great job spiking it that we didn't even have to bother you to implement yeah. it i mean like I'll, seriously can, can we get them like yeah. given that I'll, you have I'll, a channel there that totally i i will i uh, there's um three things that i'm i'll be after them about, or now three things um i'll ask them that directly yeah hey, hey lee do you got a link to that by chance i'm doing some yeah. man some boy it is. i just added it to the notes okay oh you got it in the notes? Yeah. Okay. I got it in the notes and I'm dropping it into the chat for this meeting as well. Thank you for bringing that to our attention, Lee. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Thanks, Bridget. All right. Charles, you're unmuting. Does that mean you have something to tell us? Uh, I, this makes me smile. Sorry that I'm joining, but it's good to see you all. Um, before I worked at Buoyant, I was at Nginx. And so I've 
who was very close to the first two iterations of their service mesh, which um, kind of drove me towards this whole space. So I'm excited to see what they come out with. Um, one of my former mentees was working on it. And so I know that they're using BPF for it, but that's about all I know. So um, I hope it's not an Nginx plus only project. That would be a bummer, but we'll see anyway. Oh, it, it is? is? Yeah, no, but it's not, but it's not like, as, oh shit, okay. Yeah, I guess now that it's open, it's fine. Um, uh, it is based on Nginx Plus. That said, licensing isn't, the, it's, it's not that, uh, licensing isn't such that you need, licensing is different. It's not go buy uh, a thousand Nginx sidecar service proxy licenses for your thousand service system. Um, licensing is something else I haven't, they, 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 they weren't sure what it was going to be in, so maybe Makes they sense. Well, when the first iteration was this fabric model that they worked on, and I'm sorry if I'm digressing a little bit here from the topic, but um, this fabric model where it was all a bunch of Nginx proxies with really no control plane. So I'm curious to see what the control plane is. Anyway, this is very exciting. I'm happy to see this. Yeah, that's great. Um, so if, uh you know, either Lee or Charles or whomever wants to talk to them and find out if they can, uh, uh, you know, look into writing a blog post about their experience of uh, implementing oh. SMI, that would be fantastic. Because that's the kind of stuff that I feel like, and Michelle is raising her hand, so I want to make sure we hear what Michelle has to say. But just to finish up, I'm really happy that people are implementing it. Michelle, what's up? Hey, uh, I get asked like probably like one or two times a week if um, we have anything like Kiali. And so I just want to like shamelessly bother Maltron again. <laughs> if there's anything we can do on SMI metrics, if you want to point us in a direction, um, we'd be happy to help with that. Well, one of the reasons I'm here, Michelle, because I'm still interested in the SMI. Uh, the first assessment that I did in SMI is six months. And something that I learned in my job is things change very rapidly. And I'm really happy for you guys to deliver the uh, uh, open service mesh. So uh, I'm still keeping track of the SMI progression and trying to sell internally with Red Hat. But as, as of now, uh, we are very deep committed with Istio. Um, and until something changes, it's going to be a hard sell with the SMI. That's cool. I understand that. Um, but you, you, you have my vote, if that counts. <laughs> awesome. Uh, good to hear. Um, so uh, John, who's on this call um, and on the OSM team, has been working to implement um, SMI metrics, uh, and he's done some really good work to extend uh, Envoy to um, give us some custom metrics, and then that allowed us to implement, allowed him to implement SMI metrics, and I think he's going to give us kind of like a lessons learned next meeting, so maybe that might be relevant to your team um, in particular. Uh, Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Do we have anything else? We have four minutes, and I could give you all four minutes or we could hear something else exciting. Going once, going twice. And yeah, Lockie pointing out that that blog is short of details. You know where a lot of great details would be awesome is on the SMI blog. Just saying. Yeah, I couldn't find anything. Sorry, to... my camera's not where. I couldn't find anything like, it must have been a very soft, it looks like somebody was in a meeting and listened to a paid event and wrote a blog based on that blog that you were in there. It's like, I attended their sprint developer call. So I don't know if anything more public, I went and checked their website, I haven't. Yeah, I don't, this is why I was a little bit hesitant because that didn't really feel like what was supposed to happen. It's not, it doesn't look like a, so it looks like, you know, I heard somebody talk about something and I wrote a blog. Um, so it doesn't look like it's official at an Nginx level yet, I don't know. Well, when they're ready and when it is official, we would love to hear about it. Yeah, I just wanted to learn learn more about it. But yeah, that's, Rio did the same thing. So Darren Shepard, we spoke to him and he said I could implement SMI wholesale without needing to talk to us either. So, um, 
digressing a little bit. Hey, Lee, uh, could we like, are we going to, um, is the best place to come back and sync on the conformance stuff at the SMI call next week or next time, or is it at the CNCF um, SIG networking call? Like where do y'all go into detail about this? Cause I do have some detailed scenarios I'd like for us to consider. Totally. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> There's a, there's a SIG network call tomorrow. That would be, let, let's do it. Like that would be, uh, the answer is like, there isn't kind of one, and, but waiting for two weeks probably isn't what I want to do. And uh, yeah, that'd be a great topic there. Okay, and, cool, all right then. Thanks. Awesome. It's almost like we're all running into each other at the hall, in the hallway at KubeCon and coming up with things that we should work on and discuss. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, well, I have uh, someone to take notes for next time. Um, I will. Lee. Lee thank volunteer. you, Lee. Yeah. And uh, I will find someone who is not me to be moderator next time. And I look forward to chatting with you all in two weeks or at other SIGs. Bye, Chris. Thanks for chairing, thank Bridget. Nice to see you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.